Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number four from the June 2022 International A Level Edexcel Pure Mathematics P4 paper. This question here is about uh, differentiation, um, implicit differentiation. Here we have to, um, it, tell, it tells us about this curve, which has the equation 16x squared minus 9kx squared y plus 8y cubed equals 875, where k is a constant. So we've got to show that dy dx is going to be given by this expression 6kxy minus 16x squared of 8y squared minus 3kx squared. Now, for us to find dy dx in a situation which maybe we dealt with in like P1, P2, whatever, um, we would have to normally try to make y the subject and then find dy dx, then differentiate both sides with respect to x. But in a case like this, it's very difficult to make y the subject because you have y in these two different parts of the um, equation and y is in terms of y, then in terms of y cubed. And it's going to be difficult to make y the subject of this. So um, we, can't, we cannot use explicit differentiation where we have y equals some function of x. We have to use what's called implicit differentiation. Okay, and this is how we deal with it. Basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, which is actually what we um, you know, do when we differentiate. That's what differentiation actually involves. So we're differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to x. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to differentiate um, the whole of this side with respect to x and the whole of that side with respect to x. Now, when you differentiate... Um, like an expression with respect to x. You can differentiate each expression separately with respect to x. So if I differentiate 16x cubed with respect to x, well, I'm going to get 3 times 16, which is 48x squared. So you multiply by the power, take one from the power. Now here we have 9kx squared. Now 9k is a constant. And we got x squared times y. Now x squared and y are both variables, and they are... Uh, you could say functions of x. So therefore, we have a product of two functions, product of two separate functions, which I have to differentiate using the product rule. So I've got minus 9k, I'll leave that as it is. And now I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate k squared, x squared y, sorry. So to differentiate this product, I'm going to call one of them u, which is the x squared, and the other one v, which is the y. Now when I differentiate u with respect to x, I'm going to get 2x. When I differentiate y with respect to x, I'm going to get 1 times dy dx. Okay, 1 times dy dx, because the differential of y with respect to x is dy dx. Okay, so now, using the product rule, I'll have 2x times y plus x squared times dy dx. Okay, so there we have use the product rule to differentiate x squared y, and then we got plus 8, 8y cubed. Now, when I differentiate this with respect to x, I'm going to be using basically the chain rule. When you have, um, you know, we differentiate this with respect to x, okay, we're going to be using the chain rule because y is some sort of function of x, and um, for us to differentiate this, I'm going to do 3 times 8, which is 24, and then y to the power of 2, take 1 from the power, but then I have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. Okay, so I have to differential, different, I have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. Inside the function is y. This is y cubed. Okay, so the differential of y with respect to x is dy dx. That's why you have to write dy dx, because this is in terms of y. And when you differentiate y with respect to x, which is inside the function, it's like you have 8, and inside the function you have y cubed, so it's 24 this whole thing to the power of 2, so it's 24y to the power of 2, then you have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is y. Uh, differential of y is dy dx, so that's why you end up with the dy dx. So whenever you have a y term, you differentiate as normal, and then you multiply by dy dx, basically, because you're using the chain rule. That's the reason for it. And 875 is a constant. When you differentiate constant with respect to x, you get, 800, you get 0, sorry. It becomes 0. Okay, differentiate constant gives you 0. Okay, so now we are ready to try to um, make dy dx a subject of this, but we have to expand this bracket first for us to be able to um, make it the subject. So you have 48x squared 
minus, this is 9k times 2xy, which is going to give you 18kxy. Negative 9k times x squared dy dx, that's going to give you negative 9kx squared dy dx plus you got 24y squared dy dx equals zero. Now they want us to express the answer in this form. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave, I'll, uh, what I'll do is I will, I'm going to, uh, the dy dx I'll keep on one side and everything on the other side. Okay, so what I'll do here is I will write this as, I'll just write these together on this side. So I have 24y squared dy dx minus 9k x squared um, dy dx. Okay, equals, and then on this side I will uh, take the non dy dx terms. So I'll end up with, by that will be 18 kx will be positive on this side because I have to add this to both sides. Um, 18 kxy and I'll have here um, 40 negative or minus 48 x squared. Okay, so now I can take dy dx as common from these two terms. I have dy dx times 24y squared minus 9kx squared. And that's equal to 18kxy minus 48x squared. So now I can divide both, both sides by this bracket here. And I'll be left with dy dx. So I have 18kxy minus 48x squared divided by 24y squared minus 9kx squared. Now, we want to simplify it. So we see we have a common factors um, in the numerator and the denominator of 3. So if I take that common factor out, I have 3, and this is going to give me 6kxy minus 16x squared over, and the denominator I have 3, that will be 8y squared minus 3kx squared. Those 3s cancel out. So I'm left with my final answer of dy dx equals 6kxy minus 16x squared over 8y squared minus 3kx squared. Okay, and I think that's exactly what we had to show. 16kxy minus 16x squared and 8y squared minus 3kx squared. Good. So it's very important in a question like this to show your steps very clearly because they've told you what they want you to show. So you have to basically show your steps quite clearly here. So I'd advise you to take out the factors and everything and show how you got the answer. Um, so there we have the answer to part A of this question. Okay, we're using implicit differentiation to find dy dx. Now for part B. Okay, it says, given that the curve has a turning point at x equals 5 over 2, find the value of k. So this is the equation that we were given, and this is the expression we found for dy dx, the differential. Now the turning point, we can say at the turning point, okay, we know that at turning points, okay, we know that x equals 5 over 2. Now the turning point is a place of where the gradient becomes 0. Turning point is a place, either a maximum or minimum, where the gradient becomes 0, and dy dx represents the gradient function. So Basically, what they're telling us is when x equals 5 over 2, dy dx is equal to 0 at that point. Okay, so we can use that to find uh, or to help us find what k is. So I know that if I, re if I replace the x with 5 over 2, okay, and the dy dx with 0, I'll be able to have an equation that might help us. So I have 6k times x, which is 5 over 2, times y, 6kxy minus 16 times 5 over 2 squared divided by 8y squared minus 3k times 5 over 2 squared is equal to 0. Now, the denominator part, I'm, I don't have to actually calculate this because when I try to solve this equation, I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator. So I have to multiply this by 0 and it will, be, it will cancel out because 
if I uh, if I multiply this side by 8y squared minus 3k, 5 over 2 squared, it cancels out. Multiply this by that, it's going to become 0. 0 times anything is 0. So all I need to concern myself with is the numerator. So the 2 and the 6 cancel, we've got 3. 3k times 5, that's 15ky minus, and this is going to be 16 times, 5 squared is 25, and 2 squared is 4. And equals zero. All of this, when I multiply with that zero, is going to become zero, and I cross multiply. So now I can uh, cancel this four and this sixteen. That gives me four times twenty-five, which is hundred. So fifteen k y minus one hundred equals zero. Um, I can divide everything by five. That gives me three k y minus twenty equals zero. So there's one equation I've got, which has k and y in it. Now I can't find k directly from this, but I'd also know that at the turning point, x equals 5 over 2. So I can find an expression for, for y using the original equation. Okay, because when x equals 5 over 2, we can find the value of y which satisfies this equation because this is the equation of the curve. So we have x equals 5 over 2. So let's find an expression for, for y in terms of k when x equals 5 over 2. So we have 16 times 5 over 2 cubed minus 9k times 5 over 2 um, squared times y plus 8y cubed equals 875. Okay, so that's 16 times, and that's 5 cubed, which is 125, because 25 times 5 over 8, minus 9k times 25 over 4 times y, plus 8y cubed equals 875. So the 8 cancels with the 16, leaving you with 2. 2 times 125 is 250. So 250 minus, you've got uh, 25 times 9. 25 times 9, which is 225. 225 over 4 times ky plus 8y cubed equals 875. So here we have another equation which has y and k in it. So we could solve these two equations simultaneously. So I want to find what k is. So if I use some sort of substitution where I can replace y with k, so I can take this, this equation and I can say 3ky equals 20. And then I can say y equals 20 divided by 3k. So if I substitute into this equation instead of y, 20 over 3k, then hopefully I should get the answer. So I have 2, 2, 5 over 4, k times, instead of uh, y, I'll put 20 over 3k, plus 8 times 20 over 3k, and that has to be cubed, equals 875. Okay, now what we're left with is 250 minus, and this is 220, 225 times 5. So we have 225 times 5, which is 1,125. 1,125 over 3. There's a 3 there. Plus, that's 8 times 8,000 over 27k cubed equals 875. So now, let's try to simplify this. Um, we've got to make k the subject in the end. So let's, we, if we, we've got minus 1,125 over 3, what's that equal to? Is that, does that simplify? Divided by 3? Yeah, that gives us 375, so we can simplify that. So we have 250 minus 375 plus 8 times 8, 64, so 64,000 over 27k cubed equals 875. So 250, so basically we're going to end up here with 64,000 over 27k cubed is equal to 875, and you're going to have plus, because this is going to give you negative, isn't it, 250, 375, so 250 minus 375 gives us, so it's plus 125, okay, that's that's negative 125, added to both sides, you end up with plus 125 on that side. So we got 64,000 over 27k cubed is equal to 1,000. That's 1,000. So we can cancel out these three zeros 
So now we're left with basically, I'll just continue here, k cubed is equal to 64 over 27. Let's multiply both sides by k cubed. So k is going to be the cube root of 64 over 27. So therefore, k is equal to the cube root of 64 is 4, and the cube root of 27 is 3. So the answer is 4 over 3, and that's the answer to this question part B. Okay, now, if we wanted to check our answer, we could substitute 4 over 3 instead of k, all right? And we could um, check to see if, when we put 5 over 2 into this expression, it gives us 0. If you wanted to be sure that we got the right answer. Maybe you don't have time to do that in the exam, but if you wanted to be sure, uh, like, for, for example, now, me, I want to be sure because I don't have the mark scheme for this right now. It hasn't come out yet. So when I'm at the point where I'm making this video um, the mark scheme hasn't been released yet so I want to make sure that I've got the right answer so I know k I've worked out k to be 4 over 3 which sounds like it came out as like a, a nice e you know a nice number so you know it didn't come out some weird th thing had to be rounded so let's see if actually by putting k is 4 over 3 and x equals 5 over 2 in here I get 0 because that's when the, you know, x equals 5 over 2 is the turning point. k is a constant. So let's see what happens when we put k as 4 over 3. So 6 times 4 over 3. Actually, we don't know, know what y is. when um, So we can't actually do that, to be honest, because we have to know what y is. And we don't know, well, we can, I guess we can work out what y is. Uh, y at the point is y equals 20 over 3 times 4 over 3 so that will work so y is going to be 5 so when x equals 5 over 2 y equals 5 and do k equals 4 over 3 let's see if this works this should give us 0 so 6 times 4 over 3 times x which is 5 over 2 times y which is 5 minus 16 times um, x squared so x is 5 over 2 squared okay now, if that's 0, then the whole thing is going to be 0. But I'll just put this anyway. Um, 8 times 5 squared minus 3 times um, k is equal to, um, as we worked, 4 over 3 times 5 over 2 squared. So the numerator hopefully is going to become 0. This is 3 cancelling with, with the 6, giving you 2. And the 2 cancelling with the 2. So you've got 4 times 5 times 5, 4 times 25, that gives you 100 minus, and if you square this, you're going to end up with 16 um, and 4 cancelling 4 times 25, which is also 100. As we can see, that's going to give us that's going to give us zero. So it doesn't matter what the denominator is, you're going to get zero in the numerator. Therefore, the whole thing will be zero. So it seems like we have got the right answer. Okay, so that you don't have to do that at the end, but I just want to make sure that I have the correct answer and it seems to work when k equals 5 over 2 then we can work out what y is which is 5 so we have x y and k and those values cause this dy dx to be 0 so it's kind of like you know that's where the turning point is so we um, can assume that we've got the right answer then okay so that's like if you get time in the exam a way to check um, you know if you don't have the mark scheme of course in the exam you won't so if you have time you can check too Help yourself, rest assured that you've got the right answer. And if you've made any mistake, you might have time to go back and correct it. Okay, so there's the answer to question number four from this June 2022 Pure Mathematics P4 paper from Excel. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist, the link for which will appear in this region here. And down here will appear the link for um, implicit differentiation or differentiation from P4. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle here. And don't forget to look at the description at the bottom of the video. Um, underneath, you'll see some links to other papers and other units that you might be interested in. Thank you for watching and see you soon.